Hey, welcome back to Digitize Your Books. This video was inspired by a question asked by a viewer, a viewer just like you, a viewer that asked the question in the comments below. So if you have a question, you know what to do. So the question was, how does the OCR or optical character recognition in the NAPS2 software, NAPS2, uh, which if you haven't seen my video on NAPS2, it's linked up here in a card. How does the OCR in that software compare to the OCR in Adobe Acrobat? And if you've seen my complete walkthrough video on Adobe Acrobat, should be another card up here, uh, you will know that usually I don't use the OCR in NAPS2. I would always do it, in, apply OCR or attempt to optically recognize the characters using the Adobe Acrobat software. Um, didn't even really have a reason why. I never really tried the OCR in NAPS2 until I did a video on processing a, a pamphlet. And just for expediency, I used the OCR in NAPS2. That video right up here. But that video generated the question from uh, uh, Vol, Vol the Dog Warrior, something like that. He, he or she asked, is the OCR in NAPS2 any good? So let's try to figure that out um, in today's video. Let's jump right into it. I'm going to uh, switch my view here and you can now see my desktop. So what I have, what I, what I propose, well, this is the question. How can we objectively compare the OCR results? And I have no doubt that there are computer scientists working around the world at understanding this problem and improving the results. I am none of those things. I'm not a data scientist. I'm not a computer scientist. Um, I'm just a guy trying to digitize books as best and cleanly as I can. So what I propose to do is I'm going to take um, a, a book file that we've done before. And this is actually the same uh, book that I used for my complete Adobe Acrobat walkthrough. Um, and I'm going to use that book as my sort of sample. Now, this will be a sample of one. One. This is not scientific. If it was to be scientific, I'd have to have more data. Science is based on statistics and probability. And this is a sample of one. This is barely anecdotal, but it might be still kind of interesting. Let's see what we have. So I'm going to use this book, which I still have my original raw scan from NAPS without OCR. And the neat thing is I can load this PDF back into NAPS and tell NAPS, okay, this time I want you to do the OCR. And we can then compare it to the other files that I have, which are the, um, the ones that are the output from Adobe Acrobat. So let's try that. Uh, let's just move this out of the way. And let's start up NAPS. And instead of scanning, let's use the import feature, which I haven't talked about much before. So we're going to import that book right there. And that is the raw PDF. And that's just my terminology. Raw means I hadn't processed it in any way. I'm reopening it in NAPS2. And as I'll show you in a second, when this is done, I have asked NAPS2 to use its OCR functions. Then what we'll do is we'll save it back out as a new PDF with, uh, with the OCR done by, uh, done by NAPS and we'll compare the results. So here's the book and let's just double check my OCR settings. And you see, I have checked make PDF searchable using OCR. That is checked off. The OCR language in this case is English. OCR mode is, I said best, and automatically run OCR after scanning. Um, I'm not sure how that exactly impacts our workload. Doesn't matter. I know it's going to work. So now all I have to do is save this as a PDF. Save all. I'm going to do all pages. Again, I could just do sort of a sample, but let's just see what happens. This, because I have the entire non ocr output from NAPS2. Let's compare that to the entire NAPS2 OCR output and compare first off file size. So that's the first thing I want to compare. I want to compare file size and then somehow figure out a way to compare quality. But let's start with file size. So we'll just say output and we'll just call it, um, let's just give it a simple name here, NAPS2 OCR. 
save that. Now this is going to take a couple of minutes. But let's just pause the recording for a second. Okay, we are almost done and that's it. That took about maybe five minutes, but the first thing I wanna do is compare the file size. So let us let me just drag this File Explorer window over and we can see here, let's just move this over. The original file, and let me get rid of these. So the original raw file size when I scanned it without OCR from NAPS2 was call it 112 megabytes. With OCR, also output from NAPS2, which yeah, I misspelled it in the file name, it doesn't matter. It's actually a little bit bigger, 124 megabytes instead of 111. That is, oh, let's just check for the sake of completeness. 124 over 112, it's about 10% bigger, uh, which is very interesting because the regular OCR in Adobe Acrobat actually made the file smaller. When it applied that OCR step, it uh, also cleaned up the file and cleaning up the file, it just, I guess, compressed things or took about, out some extraneous data. I don't know what it did, but I know, as you can see from the video that I do the complete walkthrough of uh, scanning with, uh, or excuse me, processing with Adobe Acrobat, that it always got smaller. So not surprising that it is bigger. It has added information. And if it didn't do any additional cleanup, that information is now uh, in embedded in this file without any uh, other cleanup to reduce the file size. Now, how can we compare quality of OCR? And I'm sure there are PhD papers that have been written on this topic, way above my pay grade, as they say, but we can maybe do a couple of rudimentary things to test it. So first, you know what we can do? We can open up and compare some pages. And I think the easiest way to, to do it will be to copy the results into Word and let Microsoft Word do the hard work of comparing the results. So I'm gonna open up this PDF. It's just opening in uh, the Edge browser. And let's, um, let's choose a page at random. Uh, first of all, let's just see if there is, yeah, I can select text. So there is some OCR in here. I'm going to, let's choose page five since we're here. I'm gonna copy the contents of page five into a Word document from this PDF. Then I'll do the same thing from the Adobe OCR PDF and we'll compare the difference. So let's start Word. Just a new document and let's go back here. I'm just going to select all of the text on this page. Well, let's do it down to here just so we don't get a partial sentence. Let's do from how much, okay, just the two full paragraphs and ending at uh, an even point here. So I'm gonna copy that, Control C, go over to Word, paste it in. Now you will notice that formatting isn't great. This is normally the results you get from OCR. OCR isn't going to necessarily preserve the exact presentation. That's a whole other engine of computing. Um, but okay, so let's look what we have. All off the bat, I can see a couple of errors. Fortunately, I got the squiggly red underline. So how much of this, of this is one word instead of two? What's the answer to one word instead of two? Um, it should have been a apostrophe S because it's short for it is. Even now it is, and you can see if we, if I zoom in here, you can see it has the apostrophe, but it got lost in the OCR. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Let's save this. And let's put it into into here and let's just call it um, NAPS2 OCR page five. Okay, there it is. And now, now what we can do is grab page five from the Adobe Acrobat output. Now, if you've seen my video on uh, using Adobe Acrobat to process 
Uh, you'll know that I kind of come out with two versions of it, the regular OCR version, for want of a better term, let's call it regular, and the clear scan OCR. I have already, prior to this video, compared those two, and uh, at least in this one book example, the results are exactly the same, which isn't surprising. The OCR engine is the same, it's just what it does with that output. One does a traditional invisible text layer on top of the picture of the page, the clear scan deletes that picture of the word words and instead applies a editable font onto the page but the recognized character that created that output is the same so though it's not surprising those two would be the same but so let's just open let's just open the regular one and again, we can see we, we've got all our files here. So the output of NAPS2 with OCR was 124, which was more than its non-OCR output. When I took that raw version and put it through Adobe, it was down to 85 megabytes. So let's compare the page five of this version, opening this in just in the Edge browser. Scrolling down to page five. Yes, this is terribly exciting watching me do this. There's page five, and let's grab this text all the way down to there, same as before, control C to copy, jump over to Word, let's get a new document, control N, let's paste that in, and let's now save this document. By the way, we can, I can already see, I can already see that I don't have any red squiggly underlines, which I had in the NAPS2 version. So already it looks a little cleaner. Uh, let's save this document. And we will call this um, Voodoo Adobe OCR page five. Just keep track of it. And now let's compare them just using uh, Word's built-in text comparison tool, which by the way, if you didn't know, is really helpful when you have situations like this where you're trying to compare two documents. So it is found in the review part of the ribbon. Go to compare, compare. Let's open up the two documents. So let's say compare NAPS2 OCR to the Adobe OCR. And yeah, I want to see everything, every possible change. And then uh, Word creates an output document showing the differences. So uh, right off the bat, we can see what we already knew. There was a space missing in. So in the way this works is that the, the old document is the first document name we gave it, which in our case was the NAPS2 OCR. So we can see the NAPS2 OCR missed that space, which was fine in the Adobe. Uh, the NAPS2 document missed that uh, that apostrophe on the contraction it is. Um, another space missed on answer two, uh, January 11 and January, oh, look at that. So, so NAPS2 correctly got, looks like January 11, the number, whereas Adobe, saw that number 11 as an N. So let's just jump back to here. This was the Adobe document. So sure enough, zoom in a bit, January 11 with kind of a funny font, it's got it as an N. So the one thing to learn here is that OCR is not perfect. Even if it's 99% perfect, and I don't know what the claimed number is, but I'm Let's just start with that. Well, on this one page in this document, there's, uh, according to Word, 370 words on the page. So if you've got 99% accurate, and let's assume that that can just be done comparable to the number of words, there's going to be three and a half errors on a page. It's not perfect. The question is, is it good enough? And uh, for what I'm doing, yes, that is plenty good enough. I am not attempting to take the OCR output and republish it or anything like that. If I was, it would need a careful cleanup to remove that 1% or even 0.1% OCR errors. Aside from that, I think we've learned that, that the 
OCR, at least in this one example, the OCR in NAPS 2 isn't horrible. It does make the file size a bit bigger. So again, this wasn't a scientific comparison. This was a sample size of one. And indeed, if I compared other pages, I might have different results, but we do see that uh, the OCR output from NAPS 2 tends to increase the file size and give results not horrible. It, it's not perfect. Adobe Acrobat OCR is not perfect, but as they say, it might be close enough for what you need to do. So like I said at the beginning of the video, this wasn't really a scientific comparison. Uh, this was a sample size of one, but it was kind of interesting to see that NAPS 2's OCR output just made the file size bigger, which again is not surprising. We're adding information to the file, so it's gonna be bigger. And there was no additional cleanup, which Adobe Acrobat does when it does an OCR step. Um, and what else did we learn? We saw that the output of Adobe wasn't perfect. We saw that the output of NAPS 2 wasn't perfect and they were not perfect in different ways. So I don't know if we can necessarily necessarily conclude that one is better than the other at this point, but it was kind of interesting to see. So I hope you found this video helpful or at least mildly interesting. Uh, if you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, go ahead and give me a thumbs down. It won't hurt my feelings. I really want to have your feedback. And if you have questions, suggestions, comments, or complaints, put them in the box down below and I'll try to respond to them as best I can. Thanks for watching and stay safe. Stay socially distant right now. Thank you.